Hello everyone, my name is Fernando de Castro Nakamura and I am a PhD student in the post-graduation program in social work at São Paulo State University at the city of Franca, state of São Paulo, Brazil. So hello from Brazil. I am here today to talk about COVID-19 pandemic and vulnerable group, the Brazilian experience during 2020 and some issues that emerged at the beginning of 2021, this year. I initiate my talk with a quotation from a sociologist and professor at the Coimbra University, Professor Boaventura de Souza Santos, that written uh, on his book on 2020, The Cruel Pedagogy of the Virus, uh, that the pandemics do not kill as indiscriminately as they do judge. They are evidentially less discriminatory than other violence against the impoverished workers, women, precarious workers, black people, indigenous immigrants, refugees, homeless, peasants, seniors, etc. But they do discriminate both with regarding to their prevention, expansion, and mitigation. So one of the lessons that we had from this pandemic is that the virus is not democratic. It affects much harder those people that do not have good conditions of life. And it's a fact that in several parts of the world, there are many people living in extreme poverty without any of the basic rights guaranteed, like education, housing, health, nutrition, and basic sanitation. In Brazil, historically, we have problems with, with high rates of inequality. People living in extreme poverty and people that don't have almost all the basic rights guaranteed. And in the same way, Brazil is the country of the successive political institutional disruptions and late democracy. So with this history in this pandemic, we could see the, the inequality and the lack of guarantee of basic rights on COVID-19 deaths. It affected much harder the vulnerable groups like black people, indigenous, impoverished, impoverished workers, precarious workers, etc. The lack of public policies for these people was really fatal to face the pandemic. And we also could see the fact that the political discourse against democracy and world recommendations got strength in the sanitary crisis. With this scenario, we faced some social, social challenges on COVID-19 pandemic, such as the ability of the states to protect their nationals from the coronavirus through social isolation, considering their conditions of life, uh, the political discourse against the pandemic, the social behavior that materialized in the spread of the hate speech and fake news, and the public policies aiming the promotion of health. So uh, we can say that Brazil is a country of continental proportions. We are 211,755,692 inhabitants in an estimated population for 2020. 54% of Brazilian population is black. And in the pandemic, every 10 people infected by COVID-19, seven are black and brown. Among indigenous pe people, the invasions by gold prospectors and, laid and land invaders increased considerably during the pandemic. And the coronavirus arose in several indigenous villages. The numbers that we have for indigenous population that is that COVID-19 affected 46,677 indigenous people and killed 932. The homeless population increased, increased during the pandemic. The impoverished people that live in subnormal clusters were 5,157,747 households. And from this data, we have that Sao Paulo is a state with the highest rate of household in Guam, with 1,066,813 households. And Manaus, 
The capital of Amazonas is the city of Brazil with higher proportion of households in slums among all state capitals, with 53%. So we can say that in these living conditions, it is impossible for these populations to take care of their own hygiene and keep social isolation. Because of these problems, we have nine states with high rates of deaths. Minas Gerais, São Paulo, Mato Grosso, Amazonas, Roraima, Tocantins, Alagoas, Pernambuco, and Sergipe. And at these states of Brazilian Federation, we could see that black people, homeless people, indigenous people, and other vulnerable groups die more from COVID-19, considered social, economic, demographic, and infrastructure factors. So to glimpse the importance of coordinate, coordinated actions for the pandemic, it is important to see the history of the pandemic in the country. When we talk about the beginning of the pandemic in Brazil, we have the first case confirmed on February 2060 during the Carnival Party. And uh, we can say that the Carnival Party occurs every year and it drives the economy and creates jobs, and so it's very good for the country. But after this party, in lots of agglomeration of people, the COVID-19 confirmed the cases increased considerably. At that time, the Minister of Health, Luiz Henrique Mandetta, presented his concerns about the pandemic and started some measures of the disease containment in respect of the recommendations of World Health Organization. The local government started the social isolation and the federal government minimized the effect of the pandemic. With the talking that we need to work, the economy has to flow, and that the coronavirus represented just a little flu. And with the social isolation, people that live in hard conditions started to be concerned about their own lives. They started to ask about how can we eat with the social isolation? How can we work? Is it preferable to die from, vi from the virus or from starvation? How can we wash our hands? We don't have money to buy neither food or neither soap. So in this scenario, uh, the leader of a group of, a group of slums, Gilson Rodriguez, said that the government did not work on measures for vulnerable groups in this pandemic. The slums became the biggest villains, while they are really were the biggest victims. The solidarity from social groups and some companies saved many lives from starvation, but it did not make up for the lack of coordinated and effective actions by the state to combat the spread of the virus. So, the result was, and is, it's uh, occurring right now. The public health started to collapse in many regions of Brazil. The law 13,979 promulgated in, on February that brought nine measures against the spread of the coronavirus, it was, uh, they were not observed, in fact, for some states of the Federation. And to make it worse, there were many protests in the favor of the president and against the president. The protest started last year in March and led many people to streets without masks and social isolation. The protests occurred after the destabilization in the three powers of the state. People asked for the return of the military dictatorship, the closing of the Supreme Court, and the closing of the National Congress, the opening of the economy, the end of the isolation, and they were a spread of fake news, fake news and hate speech against the indigenous, homeless, and black people. Uh, with, these, with these coordinated actions in the federal executive, executive power, 
some states of federation started to follow the world recommendations for coronavirus, which divided the country and led people to ask for the impeachment and the prison of governors and mayors. With these protests, people got confused about what is real or not in the pandemic. The defense of the use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine as early treatment for the COVID-19 led some states of the Federation to recommend its prescri prescription in the cases of the disease. And after the bad repercussion among scientific institutes and universities, the recommendation for the, the federal recommendation for the use of chlor chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine edited by the Minister of Health was suspended. The confusion that we saw among what is real or not in this pandemic and how the political discourse affected people much harder, the vulnerable ones, was written in the Recommendation 42 of uh, 2020, edited by National Health Council in Brazil. I put just a piece of the recommendation. Uh, considering that the adoption of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine is a political decision taken by non-health specialists and that, according to the Ministry of Health data, the hospitalizations of blacks and browns with severe acute respiratory syndrome represent 23.1% of the total, but the deaths of these portions of the population add up to 32-80%, which reinforces the extermination process promoted by the Brazilian state against the black population and other vulnerable groups such as indigenous gypsies, Islam dealers, periphery neighborhoods, settlements, populations from the countryside, on the street, etc. And complementing the recommendation said, to the federal public prosecution, therefore due to the non-compliance with the unified health system legislation and the health risks to the Brazilian population represented by the use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in the context of the pandemic by the new coronavirus, take the necessary steps to suspend the guidelines for the early drug, for the early drug handling of patients with diagnosis of COVID-19 published by the Ministry of Health. So uh, it's a fact that Brazilian political discourse from federal government has overlapped with world science. And, in, in, and this, this fact was also reinforced by the su successive changes of the ministers of health during 2020. So as ministers, we had two doctors, and now we have a general of Brazilian army as a minister of health. Now we can say that we have as conclusion that the actions against the World Health Organization recommendations resulted in a dizzying growth of cases among vulnerable groups, making it clear that although the Brazilian health system is universal, it still needs it still need needs a strong investment to be able to serve as many people as possible. Likewise, it can be observed that the political ideological discourse made people unwilling to protect them, themselves because they did not believe in the real existence of a pandemic. And as recent issues we had that the cur current Minister of Health defended an early treatment for coronavirus that was disposed in a mobile application for Brazilian population. And after bad repercussion, this application went offline and the minister dismissed his nation statements. The mandatory vaccination and the negationist movement that is increasing here in the country and the spread of fake news taking away the credibility of vaccines and the collapse of the public health in Amazonas 
But despite of all the problems that we observe here in Brazil, during this pandemic, the vaccination represents a hope for Brazilians. But to be effective, the population has to be, have to be conscious about the real context of this pandemic. And this will be only possible with an effective coordinated action from federal government to local governments, prioritizing the real information and people and people's health. Thanks a lot for the opportunity and have a great conference.